Hi, my name is Alan Z, and I'm here with Katrina A. Johnson. So, Katrina, you want us to you want to tell yourself, the audience, what you, um, about you, and then we can go into the interview. Sure. Well, I am most known from being on Nickelodeon's All That. I played Ross Perot. I played the Lemonade Scammer. I played Roseanne. All kinds of other characters with lots of makeup, so you might not recognize me. And also known for some stand-up comedy, a bazillion music videos, and all sorts of other things. Okay, so um, I went to your panel yesterday, and I learned that you were also not only an actor but a writer for some of the sketches. And because you weren't <laughs> able to talk to a, you know, like people don't know that about you as far as your writing skills. I want you to tell me a little bit about some of the sketches you did that you came up with yourself, if okay. you're able to. Sure, yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that was really cool about my show is that we had a lot of freedom to come up with our own lines, our own characters, our own voices, our own makeup looks, or also full skits. One of the favorites that I wrote that I came up with was The Wizard of Oz. So it's the Wizard of Oz because I wanted to play Dorothy, but we have Keenan who could do a Bill Cosby, so we made it Wizard of Oz. And then I'm I'm supposed to take a shower, but I'm a girl and I don't want to take a shower. So I sing all about how I don't want to take a shower and then meet all of the other cast members who are all of these Alice in, Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz. I started off rough too, so it's fine. It's just it's the morning. It's yeah. early. Yeah. The coffee hasn't set in. But um, that's just one of many. But that was probably my favorite one, my biggest one. That was a very long one. All right. So I learned that you did seven auditions to get to all that, right? Yes. Was there one in particular where you felt like it was really nerve wracking or was it all of them were just really challenging? Do you have one that sticks out where you're just like, you know, like it's just really hard to even like wrap your head around like how to approach it or were you, were you Actually, kind of smooth sailing? No. I was lucky because most of the audition, well, it was all comedy and I was already a comedian. I was already doing stand up when I was a little kid. So that part didn't bother me. I was lucky because we were doing a lot of improv and I had already been training doing improv. And one of the kids that was in my improv class was in the audition with me. So I felt more comfortable, I think, probably than everybody else, because I kind of had a little heads up on the competition because I had a friend with me. It just worked out that way. I mean, we couldn't have planned it any better, but we didn't plan it. You don't get to choose what time you go in. It just worked out that way. So speaking of your comedy, like I know you started doing it when you were younger. Um, would you say that your comedy style in terms of your stand up set is similar to how you approach humor now or have you evolved with oh, the times? No, it used to be very wholesome. <laughs> My how things have changed. Well, I think in stand up, the best thing you can do is be you unless you're being someone else, like a completely different character, like an imitation. But otherwise, the, the funniest things are the true things. So I used to be a kid, but I can't talk about needing an allowance now. I mean, I can, but it's different, different kind of daddy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so I think, no, it's completely changed because I've completely changed, but also age-wise. And my little, my little fat jokes about being prepubescent wouldn't quite work right now. How to mix it up. It's all about evolution, you know. Um, so you mentioned you were, were a video vixen at one point, mm -hmm. and I've watched a lot of VT MTV music videos, and now i got to rewatch it. Mm -hmm. But I just figured I'd just ask you so I would not have to Google everything. What videos could we find you in if you were just, like, just going down the rabbit hole of, like, video vixens? And Well, I'm kind of easy to point out because I'm usually the only blonde, the only white yeah. girl. <laughs> Unless it's a kid rock video, and then I just look like everybody else. But I did a lot of those ones. But um, a lot of rap videos. Do you have, like, your favorites? That, like, as far as, like, being on set? Or, like, a, a rapper that you liked and, you know, you, you were able to be on their video? I do have a favorite, but it's embarrassing because, well, it's Uncle Cracker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean... I'm I know you were yeah. expecting something really cool, yeah. like P. Diddy. <laughs> no, but no, it's fine. Uncle wearing, Cracker is cool. Like, P. Diddy was wearing puffy pants. I made fun of him. He didn't like it. It was uh, Okay, okay. I, I, I see how it was. So speaking of, um, you know, just how much your comedy has evolved and how you went from wholesome to more liberated, let's talk like about uncensored. Thank you. <laughs> let's talk about uh, Uncensored Radio. Yes. Uncensoredradio.live. 
is a network of shows that are um, interactive podcasts talking about all of my favorite things. Like one topic might be sexy time mishaps or what is uh, some something weird that somebody did to hit on you and you're like, what? When did this, how did they come about with this idea? So it started out with me and Jeffrey Emmett and Karen Ashley, our Yellow Ranger, about 10 years ago. And we have probably maybe a thousand episodes with Karen Ashley doing her magic. Um, you can go back and check them all out. They're all on the YouTube, on the Facebook. They're all over all the socials. And then lately we've added on camera. So in the beginning it's all audio and then later you get to look at us and watch us too. Cool. I'm going to check it out. Um, I don't know if you're able to talk about it, but I did hear that you have a new show coming out called, can I say it? Hmm? Child's Talk Radio. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to make sure. Uh, so you have a new show coming out that I can confirm mm -hmm. is Child Star Reboot. And I think it's a very interesting concept and I want you to talk about that more. Well, I can't talk about it too much. Oh, sorry. Much. No, yeah, you're right. I'm just. We could just do a little, you. little, little twinkle. Little okay, twinkle, I guess little, give us a little, a little, like, a little tease, synopsis. Little tease. Yes. Yeah, tease us, tease us. Well, it is talking about all the things you don't know about of what it's like to be a child star and all of the things that we particularly went through. There's a lot of Nickelodeon stars on there. And talks about things like we used to write our own sketches, we used to write our own shows, and sometimes they would take all of our writing and give it to someone else and make a whole other show. Things like that that you wouldn't necessarily ever know unless you heard it from us. Surviving Nickelodeon. <laughs> no, I was kidding. Don't quote me on that. I um, survived. Yeah. I liked it. I liked it. I'm good. Yeah. But that's awesome. So um, were you the one of the creators of it as far as like the idea? No, or? no. I am a late ad ad addition because I like to spill the tea. And, you know, everyone likes to hear the tea. So I'm like, let's get that one on. Yeah. <laughs> she has a lot to say. Yeah. All right. So because I believe that this one's going to be on a streaming platform, right? So I know you started out on like, you know, like network television, you know what I mean? Like we watch on the, on the, you know, the mm -hmm. TV screen and now everything's so digital. So I wanted to know your opinion as far as like this new way, right? Like we went from just like, oh, you can catch me on so-and-so and watch through the commercials. And if you don't watch it, you'll never see me until next week. Mm -hmm. Now it's, you know, it's, it's like you can watch it whenever. Like mm -hmm. how do you feel about that change in television and film? Well, I kind of think it's amazing because the whole point is that you're making this art, you're making this product, you're expressing this experience for everyone to have. And now it's readily available everywhere all the time. So I feel like it's only getting better. So do you have any, um, I know we talked about child star food and I'm, I know you signed NDAs, so I'm just going to tease it out there and you can always say no. Is there anything else you would like the audience to know about you as far as like, you know, whether it's podcasts or shows or projects yes. that you want to plug? I'm available. If you're single, I'll let you girl. Cool. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So um, let's, let's talk about, uh, you know, where we can find you and if you have any other stuff you want to share as well. Well, you can go ahead and all subscribe to the YouTube channel on Centered Live. Also, make sure to follow me at Katrina A. Johnson on Instagram. You know, the Twitter, the Book of the Faces, all the things. I'm there. Just check me out. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in.